wonderful intro. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you know us to grow for this talk. Yeah, I think we're both doing similar talks at MDC, and so this is part of that. And so hopefully, uh, after you there, and you can set up all the time. What do you say? This is so simple and easy to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so a couple weeks ago, I started to talk about some of the features of ASP.NET Web API, some of the really nice features, but I also started to talk about some of the limitations. And those limitations pop up largely when we start talking about security, namely authentication. So this wonderful framework that gives us all this stuff to deal with so many situations we deal with as developers, when it comes to authentication, it gives us no mechanism to authenticate the user. Now, while IIS is the host that the Web API relies on to actually take care of this aspect of security, it offers us a few things. It offers us basic security, and integrated, web, or integrated window security, both also bump into limitations pretty quickly, especially as soon as you try to stand up a public facing service. And the reason for that is both of these types of authentication require any client that's going to authenticate with your service to have a Windows account. And this isn't going to be a real great scenario if you have a bunch of public facing people. You don't want to create accounts in your local domain. So thankfully, there's a third option, and that option is form based authentication. And that's what I want to talk a little bit about today. Form based authentication is I believe we got it in the .NET stack in around 2.0 with membership providers that you suggested. Part of the ASP.NET pipeline, it can basically be used with any type of ASP.NET application, whether it's web form or MVC. Now, as we'll see, there are limitations to how, you're, how you can use it. But in this example, I want to talk a little bit about what actually form, form based authentication is, how it works, how you can set it up in the context of the web API, and then again, address some of the limitations. And the idea is, that this is the stepping stone for the next set of enhancements, which actually are tweaking the web API to deal with authentication in a more effective manner. So what is form-based authentication? It starts off with the client makes an HTTP GET request to a protected resource. The server attempts to authenticate that request, and it can't because there's no credentials supplied. And so it returns a 302 redirect to the client saying, hey, you need to go to a login page. Client does an HTTP GET to get that login page. It's returned to the client. The user behind the keyboard comes in his username and password and posts that form to the server. The client is credentialed along with the HTTP POST request. The server then can take that request with credentials and do a database lookup in one of the provider databases or, or what have you to try to authenticate the user. And if it can, it creates what they call an authentication ticket. And it takes this ticket, stuffs it in a cookie, sends it back to the client. It's a 302 request saying, okay, go ahead and try to re-request a protected resource. But send me that cookie. So the client requests the protected resource, passing along the cookie. The server inspects the cookie, takes out the auth ticket, says, okay, you're authenticated, returns the protected resource to the client, and the browser then can render the missing image to the screen. <laughs> missing a document. So what I want to show you quickly is how we can go ahead and implement form-based authentication in the context of the ASP.NET Web API. And I'm going to actually just go ahead and run this first. Here's our, our solution. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And you can see I requested uh, a very simple protected resource and form based authentication redirected me. So I'm going to go ahead and log in here. Submit this. And here is the, the protected page we went, we went after. It's our, our list of dogs. Seen my presentations on the web API, web API before, you've seen the screen before. And if we look at Fiddler, we can kind of trace this interaction a little bit. You can see I started with an HTTP GET request uh, to the protected resource. And in response to that, the server sent me a 302 redirect suggesting I go take a look at the login page. So from there, I went ahead and did a GET request to basically ask for the login page. The server sends it back. 
When I got the login page, I entered in my credentials and I went ahead and posted it. And in response, this is kind of where the magic happens. The server is going to send me a 302 redirect saying, okay, go ahead and re-request the uh, protected resource. But here's your auth token. And this is the cookie that represents the auth authentication ticket that I'll send back with the next request. Um, that will basically prove to the server that I am who I am. And you can see when I did a get to the protected resource again, I also sent the the authentication ticket. So this is the basic of, basis of how form-based authentication works. And you can see it's very website-centric in that it's dealing with cookies, it's dealing with views, with web pages, and login forms. But let's just see how we can actually implement this within Visual Studio. And then we'll talk about some of the limitations of it and, and where it kind of falls apart in the context of the web API. So the first thing we have to do, as Mike kind of stated, is it's really configuration-based at this point. If we look here at our authentication section in the code, you can see I'm saying authentication mode forms. And this is going to queue IIS to in the pipeline mode up for the forms-based authentication module. And I supply some additional data here, basically the login page that uh, forms-based authentication will redirect the user to when any unauthenticated request comes. Server. And from there, it really is straightforward. It's going to our MVC controller. Now, keep in mind, this is in the MVC space right now. We're not actually in the web API. And this is because we're leaning on the ASP.NET pipeline to handle authentication for us. So I'm going to throw this authorized attribute on the controller that delivers that protected resource, which is that list, that list page. And this authorized attribute simply says any request that comes in that is unauthenticated needs to be redirected to the login screen. And uh, from there, it's redirected to the login screen, the user <coughs> post the form, and get authenticated. So from an MVC perspective, this is really all it is. It's pretty straightforward. It's configuration, and it's an attribute. And this works great when you're running your web API in the context of a website. But the reality is, is most of us are not necessarily going to be doing that. A lot of us want to have public services. Maybe we're going to have a mobile app that's going to connect with us, maybe it's another application. And so you can't always rely on your web API running inside of the ASP.NET pipeline. And so that's kind of where the limitations of this method come in. And I want to kind of illustrate that here with another example I have. And we can look at our web API controller here. And this is actually the API controller that's going to service the data for that screen. This is what's going to return the list of dogs. See that in driving from API controller, and I also have the authorized attribute on here. Now, in the context of MVC, we're pretty lucky actually because by the time a request comes into this API, ASP.NET has already authenticated the user. So every action in this controller is able to execute. But if we go to Fiddler and we just hit our web API directly. You're going, to, you're going to see that right, right away we're going to get 401 unauthorized. So while forms-based authentication works in the context of the website when we're posting the form, we're creating a cookie, we're transmitting the cookie, as soon as you give your coworker the ability to hit your service directly, he's going to say, whoa, I can't authenticate what's going on. And an example of that can be shown real quickly. another example here, which is a Windows Store application for So this is a Windows Store application that I'm building for the, the same set of data. And if we go to the first screen that I'm going to load, you can see I'm kind of assuming that I'm going to be able to hit this web service. I'm using the HTTP client. I'm saying make an asynchronous request to this, this Pitbull service and take the results and basically stuff it in the view model and, and build, the, build out the view. But if I put a breakpoint here, when I run this, you're going to see the status code I get back right out of the gate is unauthorized. Because 
I'm relying on foreign based authentication to do this for us, then when we get the service directly, we're actually bypassing it. And so from that perspective, we're going to basically get, you are not authorized. Anymore. So foreign based authentication is a good way to start when we're dealing with web API, but the reality is, is as soon as you do anything outside of the context of your website, it's going to kind of tip over. So if you have goals of, you know, moving your service as a standalone, serving multiple clients, you're going to have to start looking at other mechanisms. And next week when I present again, we'll be talking about that. But from that perspective, we start looking at some of the extension points within the web API to build authentication into the pipeline of the web API itself. But for the time being, this is what we have with foreign based authentication. And if you are going to just build a website that's serviced by an API, it works fine. It's got its other limitations, like Mike suggested. But as we'll see next week when we move to basic authentication within the web API, we have a lot more options that give us a lot more power. With that, I'll turn it back over to Laura.